So the Bible has 66 books. Hebrews is book number 58. The Bible is divided into Old and New Testament. The Old Testament records God's relationship with the world through Israel. The New Testament shows God's relationship with the world through Jesus. Are we still, yeah. we still agree? Um, the New Testament falls into two parts. And you have the historical narratives and the letters or epistles. Yeah? Excuse me. Narrative talks tell the story of Jesus and the early church. Epistles teach Christians how to live in the light of what Christ has done. So, the epistles are divided into two parts. Are these two together? And we have the Pauline epistles. Paul wrote to specific people and churches. And we have the general epistles. Letters written by other authors to the churches at large. And finally, Hebrews is the first of the general epistles. So, sorry, I borrowed your I borrowed your stuff. <laughs> 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 it's a big life easy. It's a big life easy for me. Context. The context of the book of Hebrews is the security or preeminence of Christ. That is available so you can get off your pastor. Um, but just listen and just follow and stop me if you have to. Um, included in the better provisions are a better hope, a better testament, a better promise, a better sacrifice, a better substance, a better country, and a better resurrection. Amen. Amen. All believers now have direct access to God under the new covenant and therefore may approach the throne of God boldly. And those are the scriptural references for that. In summary, believers in Jesus Christ, God's perfect sacrifice for sin have the perfect high priest through whose ministry everything is new and better than under the covenant of the law. Yeah. 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 Who wrote it? <clears throat> Who wrote the book of Hebrews? Let me take this. Yes. Paul. <laughs> Paul. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why do you say that? I think mainly the end of Hebrews sounds a lot like Paul in his, you know, giving of thanks and um, praising people. Mention Timothy. Okay. Yeah. Twenty. I think it's twenty something. Yeah. 23. 23, yeah. Okay, so Dickie Michael says it's Paul. Yeah, and it says, I want you to know that our brother Timothy has been released. If he um, if he arrives soon, I will come with him to see you. Um, greet all the leaders. Yeah, so for me, when I write the uh, thing, when I write the 13, it sounded as though Paul was kind of in prison, and also we know Paul's relationship with Timothy, so this seemed to be Paul, in my own opinion. Okay. Anyone else? Or we all agree with him? Oh, we're not sure. Um, 
I think it's Paul because um, apart from what the Michael said, which I agree to, in chapter 10 of Hebrews, verse 34, there's a verse here that uh, just made me think as I was listening to it again that, oh, okay, this is Paul for real. It says in verse 34, this is the KJV, it says, For ye had compassion on me in my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Uh, that having compassion on me in my bonds seemed to be very reminiscent of Paul's lifestyle being in prison. Yeah. I'm not saying the other apostles were not in prison, but he in particular was in prison more frequently, as he said in uh, 2 Corinthians 11. Any other It's a very controversial point as to who wrote. Um, so I started off by, because I also looked at it and I think I came up with some of these scriptures myself. Uh, the book of Hebrews is different from all other epistles because the author doesn't introduce him or herself to the audience. It starts off with God. Who? Yeah. Full stop. Um, the book's style and voc vocabulary do not support any writer. Again, that is debatable. Um, and so, for me, it would be safe to say that the author is unknown, or whoever it was, was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. um, so, a lot of people say Paul, a lot of people say Abilas, a lot of people say the disciples, a lot of people say whoever. But the bottom line is, unlike the other epistles, the author does not yeah. introduce themselves. That's right. So, I think I will... So, I'm not saying you're wrong, <laughs> but it's... It's debatable. So you have a scripture to support your point. As a woman has a scripture to support his point. Um, and I'm saying, even if it was Paul or whoever else, they were still inspired by the Holy Spirit. So you can say that the Holy Spirit, since the person is not named, because all other books, you find out that either you have the, the book of this or the book of that, or Paul writing to, or this is Apostle Paul, one servant writing to, so, 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 and so. This book somehow stands out, doesn't have that. So the eyes, think, and I'm saying that, it will be safe to say that the author is unknown, yeah. there's no introduction, but whoever it was, was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So, to whom was it written? To whom was the book written? Book of Hebrews. Hebrew Christians. To the Jewish Christians, okay. Anyone else? Funny enough, that's what I've always thought. But please correct me. Wait, this is a Bible, this is Bible study. And so, like if you're really Christians, you can go back and check. And uh, when you have your review next week, discuss, let me know. Uh, I'm not sure I can make it next week, but we'll see. So who was it written? The book of Hebrews was written to three sets of people. And on my way here, I realized it was written to four sets of people. So I changed a bit. Um, believers, the Hebrew Christians. They were facing persecution and rejection from fellow Jews. They were facing temptations to cast away any identification with Christ. They were also trying to hold on to the symbolic and spiritually powerless rituals and traditions of the Old Covenant. So it was written to believers, Hebrew Christians. The second set of people were the Jewish unbelievers who were intellectually convinced of the Gospel but were not spiritually committed. And there's some scriptural references uh, to, to back that up. Please check, read and if you think I'm wrong, please let Pastor Bumi know and please let me know. Um, then the third set of, uh, set of people is the Jewish unbelievers. Those who had some exposure to the gospel but were not convinced of its truth. 
and the fourth set, which appears on this slide, was written to us. Yeah. Yeah. The present day Christians. That the Holy Spirit is going to know my way here, so that's number four. But however, he says, I will say that the epistle was primarily addressed to the Hebrew believers. Well, I think Sister Shalim takes the prize for that. Yeah. <laughs> Why was it written? Why was the book of Hebrews written? Why do we think it was written? One of the reasons why the book was written, obviously it's been, 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 been disclosed, was to encourage um, the Christians that were going through persecution. Yeah, so one of the reasons why it was written. And um, also to encourage the, uh, the, the Christians to, to focus on the things that can lead to maturity, not the things that can easily entangle us. Sort of saying that we need to move on from baby stage to, yeah. Baby stage, so growing up. <laughs> Was it also to, um, just to clarify, just as you said in the intro, just who Christ is, um, and his significance to the faith. Um, because I, thinking about it, a lot of them were still perhaps going back to the believers, going back to the law. They were still trying to incorporate the law into their faith. Yeah, they tried to mingle the two. So it had to, the, the book was to establish Christ's superiority and to just whatever doubt or whatever confusion there was, just to clarify it. For the, for the believers. So the epistle, was, the epistle was written to encourage all three sets of people. The writer refers to the letter as a word of exhortation. That's Hebrews 13, 22, a very long word of exhortation. Yeah. The message of Hebrews is designed to stir the reader into action. To the believer, have faith and confidence in Christ. To the intellectually convinced, receive Christ, you're right on the borderline, don't fall, you're only a step away. To the unbeliever, look at how much better it is to receive Christ. Book structure. Now, this is one I give me. <laughs> um, for the book structure, uh, I actually had to consult one of the commentaries. Uh, but I found out that when I did, and when I put it down, it made me understand the book of Hebrews. That was the, for me, that was like the the missing piece of the, of, of the jigsaw. So when I now read the book of Hebrews under those headings, or with that structure in mind, it made more sense. It made me to break it down and then I could get my head around what was going on and just kind of put things together. It's still not totally clear, that's why this is just walking through, this is just kind of structure, kind of outline. And I still encourage us to go back and read it again. But this kind of gave a bit of gave a bit of put a bit of flesh on the bones, so to say. Um, so book structure. The book can divide can be divided into six parts. Uh, like we discussed before, the security of Jesus Christ's position. Uh, Hebrews 1, scripture references are long over them. And under that you have a better name, better than angels, a greater message, a greater messenger, a greater salvation, and a greater savior. 
Then you have Beth still under the security of Jesus Christ's position, better than Moses, a better rest. And then point two, the security of Jesus Christ's priesthood, that is Jesus Christ as the priest of the New Testament. And that's Christ as a high priest, exhortation to full commitment to Christ, Christ's priesthood like the Melchizedek, and I'll say it right this time. And number three, the spirit of Jesus Christ's priestly ministry. None of that you have through a better covenant, in a better sanctuary, by a better sacrifice. Then you have number four, the spirit of believers' privileges. That's the scripture reference, it's all found in there. Saving faith, false faith. I've never seen false faith before, but I'm going to get that. Okay. Um, genuine faith, heroes of faith. And those are the ones we know, we all know the heroes of faith. She's very faith. And then we have number five, the security of Christian behavior which is in relation to others, in relation to ourselves, in relation to God. Then you have number six, the sixth part, which is a, just a little postscript that is found in Hebrews 13, 22 to 25. Are we still together? Yes. Have I lost anyone? No. We're still here? Okay. Yeah. Uniqueness. Why is the book of Hebrews unique? It doesn't say the person who wrote it. Jevon said Jevon. Joe said some years back that, uh, oh, I won't see this auntie anymore, but somehow I'm seeing his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing his face. very well. That was what I first said. I said, hello, auntie. I'm thinking, oh, wow. This is Joe. <laughs> uh, can I tell us a secret? I remember. Joel we went into kind of find out what it was like to be deaf. Do <laughs> 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 you still remember? Do you remember? That's the first time in my life I've ever got in an ambulance. Not ah. in an ambulance before. Yeah. Pastor Bumi was preaching a uh, convention in HCC Temple <laughs> And his son was wanting to find out what it was like to be deaf. <laughs> and yeah, put some paper, paper sweet wrappers in his ears. Yes. And they got stuck. And it's really tough in the A&E song. Sorry, I had to do that. Okay. <laughs> I think I've just I think I've just reached myself out of that. <laughs> That's, if you think I still don't know what this auntie will say. <laughs> you think this you're next. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, okay. um, I would want to say that one of the uniqueness of Hebrews is, is as you said before, it's a New Testament version of Leviticus. Yeah. The cameraman is with me. Um, one of the uniquenesses of um, the book of Hebrew can be um, linked to the way the book 
kind of connect the Old Testament with the New, and um, the way the book give explanation for the practice of the Old Testament, which were shadow of the things in, that was accomplished through um, the New Testament, and also the way the book answered so many questions in the mind of the Hebrew, uh, uh, mind of the Jews concerning Christ and the New Covenant. I'm not sure if I have that on any of the slides, but it's, that is so true. Whoever wrote the book, which is why I struggled a bit myself with whether it was Paul. Whoever wrote the book of Hebrews had a very, 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 very good knowledge of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And if I have read the book of Hebrews, the Old Testament scriptures are just interwoven into almost every, almost everywhere. The Psalms and it's just, it's just there. So he had a very, and they were used in the right manner, right form, right place. So whoever he was had a very, 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 very good knowledge of, so maybe he was born, I don't know, but that person had a very, very good background, knew about all the Leviticals, the um, sacrifices and priesthood and everything, and loved the Old Testament scriptures out, and was able to link it in to the present day and make a comparison between that and what Christ had done in the New Testament, in the New Covenant. So up here I have, under uniqueness, <laughs> so it says, through the epistle, though the epistle is primarily to the believers, the author pulls the three groups together and meets, meets each of their particular issues in the very same letter. It's a letter of exhortation designed to stir the readers, both believers and unbelievers, into action. This is given in the form of six warnings. Uh, the letters so six warnings one the letters instructions and commands and better provision promises found throughout the text now we will do some work for about 10 15 what time we finish like five to eight okay can we take probably about so 10 minutes and scan through the book of hebrews and see if we can find the six warnings, the let us instructions and commands, and the better provision promises. So either underline or look or search or write them down, the scripture references. We'll go through anyway, but see how many we can find. There's some let us instructions, there's some warnings, and there's some better provision promises. But don't forget what for the... But the only set, which I don't think, in case it's not on any of the slides, is the way the author, the uniqueness again, is the way the author kind of married the Old and the New Testament together in his explanation. It's one book that starts with God. The first words, the first statement in the book of Hebrews is God. I don't know about you, but maybe I should say this. I'm, I'm at home. Things, I can search for things. Yeah, I'm not looking at anybody. 
in particular. I'm just, I'm just saying. Just saying. Right. Sorry? The apps help you do the same thing as well. Sorry? The apps help you do the same thing as well. The on the mining. Okay. Okay. I, 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 I don't mind apps on an iPad or a tablet. I struggle with the phone, but then maybe I'm old school. You know, I said that. Before. You said the messages here, friend, on WhatsApp. Right? You can have a conversation on WhatsApp. So maybe it's me. So um, that's why I'm not talking to anybody, but that's a personal thing. I know with the apps, you can know, search all sorts of things on the line or look or find or yeah some warnings, you found some letters, you found, who's found some letters? Okay, how many letters did you find? I found about two, about four, five. Okay, how many letters did you find? Three. Three, okay. Certain parts of it. Maybe that's what she's doing. I don't know. Okay, check that. It's not for our Bible study. That's why I said a lot of things I've never seen in the book of Hebrews. I've seen or I've, I've noticed just by 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 doing this, um, by preparing for this um, um, Bible study. Yeah. So the whole idea is there's no correct answer, but I'm trying also to challenge you to read the book of Hebrews again, but this time to read it with a bit more understanding, with a new, with a new lenses. Like I said, it opened it up a bit more when I saw the structure, when I saw the, when I saw the structure that actually divided the whole book into those six parts. It helped me to actually think in that direction, and then I began to process what the author was trying to put across to his audience, and that's why I said. As I was coming with you, I now thought, hang on a minute, it's not just to this process of people, it's also talking to us. Because yeah, right. it's a letter of education. Yeah. So there are things that we can take out of this letter that we can apply to our own lives Amen. and that will make us you know, that will make that will make us grow. Yeah. And that's why I said I hold on to what Sister Jennifer said when she said, and that's why I put that quote down, that it will be a life changing experience. Amen. And it's not just a life experience for me, but I want it to be a life changing experience for everybody. Yeah. Through the book of Hebrews. And then we now begin to add on to it. The Bible says add on to your faith, begin to add on other things. That's how we grow. Mm -hmm. So I there's certain things I don't take for granted. I've told Sister Jennifer I'm busy. I can't come. Or I can't make it. Hey, because I just want to check it out. But I just felt now. And that's why I actually have, I can say that in all my years of being a Christian, I have never read the book of Hebrews like this. Yeah. I have read it. Yeah. I have quoted some scriptures. Yeah. I'll probably preach from it. Yeah. But I've never read it. 
and I'm still saying I'm not done reading it yet. Yeah. I'm not done. It's like, wow, this book is here and it's loaded. Believe me. It's not a book you can finish in a day or, or, or when I say, yeah, the difference between studying and reading. You can read it in half an hour. But it's a book that you can you study and study and study and study and study and study and you still find new things. Yeah. So, are we done with... What did you find? Uh, I found... I found nine. Of? I found two, I found three warnings. Mm -hmm. And the rest of them are let, the let us. Let us, let us, let us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let us. Okay, good. So, one of them is chapter two, plus one. Mm -hmm. Chapter 2 verse 1, mm -hmm. this is a warning, we must pay more, we must pay more careful attention, therefore to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, um, in chapter 10 verse 25, this is up. 22. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an example of the let us, um, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to clean us from a guilty conscience and having our body washed with pure water. Okay. And in 23 it says, and let us consider, I mean, let us hold uns unswervingly to the to the hope we profess. Mm -hmm. For he who promised is faithful. And verse twenty four as well says, and let us consider how we may spur, spur on spur one another mm -hmm. on toward love and good deeds. Mm -hmm. Verse 25 as well oh, wow. says, Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, no, but let us me. encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. And in fact, mm -hmm. uh, then in chapter 12, verse 14, this says, Make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And then in chapter 5.11, it says, We have much to say about this, but it is hard to explain because you are, you are slow to learn. And in chapter 1, verse 6, It says, and again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says that all God's angels worship him. Mm -hmm. oh. okay. And in chapter 3, 7, <laughs> it says, so as the Spirit says today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the desert. Okay, I've actually seen more than I got there. Well done. <laughs> So that's what I'm saying about the book of Hebrews. You, each time you see, you read it, you will see something you haven't seen before. I'm hearing some things that even I don't have in my notes. So, again, I'm going to go back and read and then find some more. Because it's just the word of God. That's the way it is. You, you think you've exhausted some things, but you haven't. You always find something new each time you look at the word of God. So let's go through what I've got quickly and see how many we've got. But I'm sure Doris has more than I've got. Yeah. So there's a warning against drifting from the things we have heard. We, we all heard that one, we've all because of us got that one. And there's warning against dis disbelieving the voice of God. There's warning against degenerating from the elementary principles of Christ. There's warning against despising the knowledge of truth. Warning against devaluing the grace of God. Warning against departing from Him who speaks. So 
Carl. I'll just add on some of the ones that Doris and Sister Victoria said. Now, the latest commands, uh, these are the interesting ones. And I think Doris mentioned two or so that I'm probably going to have up here, but let's see. So the first one is, let us fear, lest anyone come to have to seem to have come short of it that is entering his rest. Let us be diligent to enter that rest. <coughs> Let us hold fast to our confession. Let us come boldly. So you can see the book of Hebrews is actually, that's why it's to us as well. It's encouraging us as, as well. <coughs> Let us go on to perfection. Let us draw near. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope. Let us consider one another. I think there was two more that Dory said in 25, 24 and 25 that I don't have on here. <coughs> Let us lay aside every weight. Let us run with endurance. Let us have grace. Let us go forth to him. And let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise. The better provision promises. Did anyone find any of the better? Did it? Yeah. Which one did you find? Chapter 7, there was a few in there, 7.19 says, for the, Lord, for the law made nothing perfect, on the other hand there is the bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. has obtained a better excellent ministry inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant which was established on better promises. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go for that. So we've got a better name. Uh, okay, I'm using the New King James, so I beg your pardon. Okay. okay. So it's what the Lord can do is as superior. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I'm using New King James, so um, I know Pastor Paul uses, except his change, he uses the. He knows what I'm going to say. Some of them are not being complete. <laughs> Um, so we got a better name, we got a better hope, um, a better covenant, better promises, better sacrifices, better possessions, better country, better resurrection. Better something. <laughs> 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 I could have been after that something. So something can be something. Something like that. Actually there's better things too, so better things. And uh, yeah. Popular verses. Now this is uh I think I've realized that some I've left out some, but there are a lot of verses that we quote um, in Hebrews. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 is the most. Um, this is what I've got here. I've got Hebrews 10. Yeah. 
I think he was four as well. I met him. Um, 12, 1 to 2, let us lay aside every weight that so easily besets us. Let us run with endurance of God's grace. He was 12, 14. We know them, don't we? Four, I think I left out the late, the, the initial ones. There was some I thought of after it was an hour. Uh, but my now speaking to Bible scholars, I know they know them all. Right. Summary. So, what do we think of the book of Hebrews? In light of what you read before, and in light of what we kind of run through as a word this evening. How would you summarize the book of Hebrews? Um, I will add that um, I have to give the book of Hebrews another name. I will say it's the book of better promises. Or great, you say great, or like others have been to be your promises. And um, you also, there is a popular saying that we say here that the book of Hebrews says so that Jesus has paid it all. It's a done deal. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, we don't need any more priests to go ahead of us. Christ is our priest that is constantly interceding mm -hmm. on our behalf. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? On this side? At the back? At the side? And the people that take the mic around, do they want to speak? <laughs> yeah, if I have more power, I have more mic. Let's hear your voice. Yeah, I'm just going to add that. I would say when I read the book of Hebrew about two weeks ago, it's kind of it's really really loaded which carry more into uh, information that sometimes it's hard for you to like just put everything in your in your head. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so it's a great book. Amen. Yeah. Um I think it's very interesting. Because of the way uh, the book of Hebrew described the man of God, uh, uh, Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, especially from the Hebrew first chapter one down, I became there are some questions in my, in my mind, especially about how. Um, I'm Your true God will last forever. No, it's like two people who's having a discussion, the Father and the Son, yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. A lot was going through my mind because I know when we place Jesus as our God and everything. So I started asking, that's what I do, I, ask, I was just asking myself questions. Now, okay, if I go to the food and somebody asks me this question, okay, you say Jesus is, is God. And so put this type of scriptures to me. Well, how am I going to answer? Because he's stating clearly there is Jesus who is the Son of God and there is Almighty God. So I actually came today to ask that question. That's okay. If somebody should ask me and with this scripture, because there are people who already know this, and they will read it and say, okay, you are telling me Jesus Christ is God. So, and give me the scripture. So how am I going to answer that question? To the person based on the scripture that the person will quote. Thank you. On that photo? See, I, 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 I serve in the multimedia department, so I know a lot of times things go on around you and you're working, but sometimes you're not involved. It's very easily done. So everybody goes on thinking, yes, this message was powerful, and thinking. 
didn't see anything. So my advice to people in the media is don't leave church without some form of the message. Go home and have church. Because when you're working, you hear some things but not everything. Because you're focusing on the slides or the camera or the audio. So go home and have church when you get home during the week. And thankfully we have different formats now. MP4, whatever format. Yeah. Email it to yourself, YouTube, whatever. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> right. Chris uh, God. Um, for me, my summary from the book of Hebrew, like I said earlier on, it's the book that explained it all from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Is I'll call it the book of explanation of God's God's entire plan for humanity. Starting from him and where it, it's all gonna end. Anyone else? Just uh, yes. <laughs> We've not said it all this time. This is the all. God is good to <laughs> my my is. Yeah, it's, um, it's just in line with what Brad Gordon said, but it's in, a, it's in a question form, kind of. But yeah, because people have issue about we saying that Jesus is, is God. But Hebrew is, Hebrew one is um, emphasizing, emphasizing on it, and at the same time, he started as a son of God, then emphasizing that he is God, he's the very radiant of God, and all that God has said about him. The prayer stands out, he says, Oh God, your throne. He said, concerning the son, he said, Oh God, your throne lasts forever. Yeah. So um I, I would maybe if we have time. If there will be more explanation on that as to for me mm. so that we can like Rabbi said um, expand it more when a question like that is those which I saying about you know, what other ways can we make it so clear or convincing to to others who has who might be struggling or yeah who don't have the full understanding of it so if you would have a few minutes, maybe if it can be expanded on. I have seen that for the guest, and if not, I'll leave that to your evil pastor. <laughs> Summary of Hebrews. Jesus is both the greater priest, greater sacrifice, of a greater covenant with better and greater results. My prayer for you. And this is my prayer for the members of NICC. Hebrews 13, 20. Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus Christ Amen. from the dead, Amen. that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make each and every one of you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well pleasing in his sight Amen. through Jesus Christ Amen. to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Blessings. Amen. What do we think? What have we learned? Well, do you want to take that next week when we meet? Want to reflect over it or think about it? I can give some of the lessons that I've seen and some of the things that I've seen and maybe you want to go home and maybe read again and reflect 
and can work out or can see if there are any more lessons uh, from that very long exhortation. <laughs> with some very serious warnings. And some very nice promises as well. For me, I would say lessons. Lesson number one is no mixture in our service and walk of faith with God. The Hebrews, they were going through a situation whereby they were one leg in the New Testament or the New Covenant and the other leg in the Old Covenant or the Old Testament sacrifices and rituals. My, the second lesson for me is that the just shall live by faith. Our walk with God is a walk of faith and we should look up to Him always, regardless of circumstances we find ourselves in. The Jewish Christians were being persecuted by the non-Christians and people around them, or the Hebrew Christians were being persecuted. And they were thinking of going back. They were thinking of denying their faith. They were thinking of... <laughs> we, 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 we will still go to the temple, but at the same time, we're... So we're mixing a lot of things together. And we just need to realize that our walk with God is a walk of faith. And that's why it's relevant to us today. Because you, in schools, in offices, wherever we find ourselves sometimes, sometimes we're actually afraid to say that we're Christians. Sometimes we don't all know that we're Christians. I remember a long time ago when they asked, oh, well, how was your weekend? I just say it was fine. Because I didn't want to say to them I was in church. When I got to a stage in my Christian life whereby, when they asked me, well, how was your Sunday, how was your weekend? I now tell them I was in church. And I went to church at 9 o'clock and I came home at 5 o'clock in the evening. <laughs> no, I <I'm> apologize. <laughs> 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 yeah, they get weedy. Yeah. 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 I tell them, I ain't doing a late shift because I'm going to church. I act church again. Then Friday, come and swap my day shift or come and swap my call and go to jail. How many times you say by now you should have some sores on your knees? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but that is part of still confessing yeah. your faith. And these guys were afraid to say that they were Christians. Yeah. Christ, the perfect sacrifice, has paid the full price for our sins once and for all. Once and for all. Fourth lesson that we should hold fast to our confession of faith without wavering. The fifth one is remember Hebrews 13.6. What does that say? Confidence. So that I can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. What can a man do to me? When we have that kind of mindset, and we say, mm -hmm, what I'm going through, I know that the Lord is my helper. What can man do to me? Oh, I should do that. <laughs> Thank you.